Good morning everyone, Adam here. If you're like me, you've been spending a lot of time thinking about job evaluation, of course. And if you'll join me on a walk and a talk, we'll uh, have a little chat about exactly what job evaluation is, how it works, and why uh, it has a role to play. So, job evaluation, um, underpinning kind of like family, uh, job family frameworks, and a way of comparing different roles. Now, the basic concept of job evaluation is very straightforward. It is an impartial, objective framework for comparing the size of different roles and being able to compare roles that might be working in very different areas to see if they are delivering broadly the same value for the organisation. So, if you can picture it, if you've got a software engineer, you have a uh, optical engineer, you've got an accountant, you've got an HR person, you've got someone in marketing, someone in sales. They're not doing the same job, clearly. They've got very different duties. However, might they be doing work of equal value to the organisation? And job evaluation is the way that you get to the bottom of that question. And there's a variety of different systems. Um, some uh, are very granular. They get down to very specific uh, levels. So, for example, the Hay system, um, if you go through the job evaluation process, you come out with points and you have a very specific number. Uh, if you go through something like Willis Towers Watson uh, and their job evaluation methodology, you'll come out with uh, something from about 20 different grades. And then you have um, other systems which maybe would put you into five different grades. So the output uh, can vary depending on the system. So it's a consideration for what you pick out. But what you are looking at are broadly similar things. You're looking at the scope of the role. What kind of impact does it have across the organisation? Is it a very narrow impact or does it affect the whole organisation? What kind of experience or expertise is involved? The technical knowledge to be able to deliver it. Um, what kind of resources does it command? Whether that's people or cash um, or uh, other you know, technical items. And through these different uh, lenses, all of these, you sort of, you put them together and they're deliberately worded so they're not specific to any part uh, of the organisation. So, you know, if you're talking uh, about a salesperson, you're talking about a finance person, you're talking in more generic terms that allow you to try and get to the bottom of the role and make these comparisons. So, why are we doing this? What's, um, what's the benefit of job evaluation? So, we've been through this process, we've evaluated our roles, uh, so what, what What do we do with that? Well, there's some small benefits. Um, so for example, uh, pay benchmarking. Pay benchmarking um, essentially relies on different forms of job benchmarking to understand the level of the role so that you can compare jobs and, and assign salaries. Um, you can, but the primary purpose uh, comes down to, so sort of to two purposes, and that is equality within the organization and also organizational design insight so equal pay for equal work okay we have our gender pay reporting um, we have uh, the equal pay legislation and we have our solemn duty uh, as human beings to actually treat our people fairly and pay a fair wage for work and Job evaluation helps cut through any subconscious bias of the size of roles and it helps make an objective assessment of whether or not something is delivering work of equal value. The best uh, example is uh, Glasgow City Council um, uh, equal pay claim back from decades ago. And the pay claim was between uh, refuse collection workers, so the bin men, and between the care workers. And essentially the, uh, the bin men had, you know, various union negotiated rises and all sorts of things over the years and they were running uh, a great whack. And the care workers were on uh, very low pay in comparison. 
And the case came down to job evaluation. Are they in fact doing similar work? And when you looked at it through objective criteria, they were. Are they both working on social hours? Yes. Does it both involve hard labour? Yes, they're lifting people, they're moving them around, uh, it's care workers, uh, they're obviously moving around the bins. Is it dirty work? Yes, one is dealing with rubbish, the other one is dealing with human waste and blood. And as they went through these criteria, essentially, the roles were performing similar duties and delivering similar value. And therefore, they were essentially the same wage. And on that basis, under equal pay legislation, there was an obligation to pay equal work wages for equal work. So, job evaluation underpins that assessment. It allows you to cut through um, the perception of different roles and understand whether or not they are truly delivering work of similar value. So that's a key part of your equal pay defence and, as I say, of just fundamentally treating people fairly. But what about organisational design? Now, most people might not uh, immediately jump onto this one, but the thing is, once you've evaluated your roles, once you've sort of established the level of them in terms of responsibility, uh, in terms of duties, you then get to an insight into the shape of your organisation. And one of the things that it can highlight is gaps. So I was a consultant, I worked with a consultancy called Enecto, and in their job evaluation system, where it was applied, one of the things that would become quite obvious to us is where an organisation had skipped a level. And uh, one of the uh, things uh, I encountered occasionally, you come to an organisation and you're, uh, you're looking at their setup, and sometimes we would note that we would have an HR team with a very highly paid HR director, and then the next person after them was a sort of low to moderately paid sort of HR advisor and then maybe an HR administrator. And the thing is, what they were missing was someone in between. So they had an HR director who should be this big strategic focused negotiator. They are setting the direction, but then they should have someone that they can hand off to be their tactical implementer. And actually, because they were missing that person, what frequently found is that projects with those kind of setups were quite difficult. Um, to put it bluntly, the HR director was always incredibly overworked because they were trying to be both strategic and also then the tactical implementer. Because the person they had underneath them was, you know, very good for sort of turning the handle, but basically they lacked the, the adequate structure. Their organisational design was off. So, with job evaluation, Simply put, you are objectively looking at the size and complexity of all the roles in your organisation. And then with that insight, you can then go about comparing the roles, looking at your organisational design, and then also looking at how much you pay the different roles. And making sure that you are treating people fairly. Simples. Job evaluation. It's ace. I hope you've enjoyed this walk and talk. Cheerio.